The Name Jar by Yang Sok Choi and narrated by Irish Apura. Through the school bus window, Yun He looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day, and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered a little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Yun He's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name, Yun He had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Oh, is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Yun He, surprising her. Yun He looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine! Yun He answered and quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Yun He said Yun He. Une? The girl asked, scrunching up her face. Oo 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 nay! Some kids chanted. No, no, Yun He corrected. It's spelled U N H E I. It's pronounced Yun He. Oh, it's Yu He, the boy said. Like Yu He. What about Hey You? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Yun He hurried to get off. Yuhei, bye bye! The kids yelled as she left. Yun He felt herself blush. Yun He stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? asked a curly haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? he asked cheerfully. Yun He nodded. And before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher Mr. Kokoros almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokoros thanked him and greeted Yun He. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Yun He smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? someone shouted. Yun He pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokoro showed her to her desk, she felt many round curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Yun He kept thinking about her name. How was school, Yun He? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Yun He simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you are learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you're a good Korean. I will, replied Yun He. But, but I think I would like my own American name. She said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Yunhe is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Yunhe complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Yunhe, her mother said. That's a good thing. Yunhe just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Yun He and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed later that day, Yun He and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fadil's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar. Until they got to Kim's market. The sign was in both English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean-style spicy pickled cabbage, and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Yun He's favorite for soup. It made Yun He smile. Just because we've moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Yun He. 
Helping your mother with the shopping? He asked. Yun He nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Yun He, she answered. Oh, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Yun He nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a new master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Yun He. That evening, Yun stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then, she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Hi, my name is Shuji. She said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning, when Yun He arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Yun He took one out and read it aloud. Daisy, that's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. Yun He took out the rest of the paper. Tamela, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Yun He nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over Yun He's face. Ralph quickly said, We'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all, and you'll have the longest name in the history. At 3 o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Yun He looked out the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids living in groups. Hey! A familiar voice called out to her. Yun He turned around to see the curly-haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you? Don't you have any name? Yun He thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out a small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stuffed it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey, and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow! That's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Yun He said. And then, the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day, the jar got fuller with more names, and Yun He read them all. She found a few names she liked. Miranda, Stella, and Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you chose the name I put in, Margo told her at snack time. I've put in three more, said Ralph. Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. When Yunhe got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly and it said, To my Yunhe, I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here the moon is up, but there the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Yunhe, your grandma forever. Yunhe took out her wooden stamp and filled a paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Yoon Hye walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Yoon Hye. Hello, Mr. Kim, Yoon Hye replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer. Turning around, it was Joey. Your name is Yoon Hye? He asked her with his eyes open wide. Yoon Hye looked quickly at Mr. Kim, then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Yunhe. And it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Yunhe, 
Joey said slowly and this time perfectly. It made Yunhe smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you on Monday, Yunhe, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, Yunhe came to class early to look at the names one last time. But the chart wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper. Paper with a name on it. Yuna slipped it in her pocket. Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Yuna said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokoro's desk or on any other desk, and it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves. As other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon, Mr. Kokoro came in and Ralph shouted at him. The name jar! The name jar! The name jar is gone! The jar with all the names in it! Gone? Mr. Kokoro replied. With a look of concern, he asked Yune, Did you get a chance to read all the names? Yune nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Yune wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I like the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me, she told the class. But I realized that I like my name best, so I choose it again. Korean names mean something. Yune means grace. Grace? Grace in he? shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Na he, unye, un hai. Yuna said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon, the kids began to say it better. Even Mr. Kokoro's. They applauded Yunhe's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Yunhe. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokoro's reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Yunhe heard her new friend say goodbye. Bye, Yunhe. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Yunhe. Yunhe said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Yunhe, Yunhe, come downstairs. Mother called up to Yunhe. Your friend is here. Yunhe rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? Asked Yunhe breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um. Well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name. And you did! He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? He asked. Thank you! I'll keep them as a souvenir, Yun has said happily. Then, she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar too to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Yoon Hae. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then, he took out a dark wooden stamp with the beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the pink ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Chinku, read Yoon Hae. That means friend. And Chinku smiled back.